Uh, thank you, Hotek. Um, so this, in this talk, I'll be talking about the limits on the power of garbling techniques for public encryption. Um, this is joint work with Sanjam Garg, Mohammed Haji Abadi, and Mohammed Mahmoudi. So in this talk, we will revisit the long-standing open problem of uh, whether we could base public key encryption on one-way functions. So the seminal result of Impagnazer and Rudish in 89 have shown that this is not possible in a black box way. So this still leaves open the possibility that there are non-black box methods that we might use in order uh, to build public key encryption from one-way functions. So let us first briefly uh, define what it means to be black box and non-black box. So the standard notion of black box construction was introduced by Pagazer and Rudich and later formalized and expanded upon in subsequent works. And basically what this means is that a black box construction of, of a primitive Q from another primitive P is a where the construction Q only uses P as an oracle. It makes oracle calls and receives an answer back and forth. It only uses it in a black box way. And so it cannot use, uh, for example, the code or the description of P in its construction. And the security uh, requirement says that any adversary that breaks the construction queue can be turned into an adversary that breaks uh, the underlying primitive P. And in this talk, we'll only be considering uh, uh, black box security. So the adversary can only use the underlying adversary in a black box way. So then when we say that we have a non-black box construction of Q from P, the code of P is actually fed into the construction of Q. And informally speaking, we can roughly divide the common non-black box techniques into two categories. The first category being so-called low-tech non-black box techniques is basically the ones that can be realized using a one-way function, such as, for example, garbling, zero-knowledge proofs, and uh, witness indistinguishability proofs. And then we have the second category, which we call high-tech. And these are basically uh, those uh, techniques that are based, that require uh, stronger assumptions, such as fully or morphic encryption, or even I.O. And in this talk, we will be focusing on the widely uh, used uh, non-black box technique of garbling, which, as we will say to see later on, will also uh, imply uh, limits on um, the other low-tech uh, techniques. So let us briefly uh, uh, remind ourselves what a garbling scheme is. So basically, a garbling scheme consists of a subroutine, we'll call it garb, that accepts as input a circuit and a seed, and outputs a garbled circuit with some uh, uh, input labels where, for each bit of the input. And looking ahead, we note that since uh, what, 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 makes, what, usually makes non -black, what, what usually makes constructions not black box when they use garbling is the fact that this garb subroutine accepts a circuit. But I will explain what it means, uh, what, what this means in more detail later on. Furthermore, we have a second subroutine that given the garbled circuit and a sequence of input encodings representing uh, each, uh, for each bit of the input, it would evaluate uh, C of X. And the security basic basically says that there is a simulator that given C of X would output something that's indistinguishable from the garbled circuit plus the input encodings for that input. And in this talk, we will mainly be dealing with the decomposable or projective variant of garbling, which basically states that uh, we are allowed to uh, encode each bit of the input one by one, individually. So now, going back to our main question, we want to say, if we could get public key encryption for one-way function plus garbling, can we do that? And what motivates this main question is that we know first that we can get garbling from one-way function by the result of Yao. And by the recent result of uh, uh, Dotling and Garg, they showed that they could get identity-based encryption uh, from the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption using garbling. And this is done in a non-black box way due to garbling. And this circumvents the previous impossibility result that shows it cannot actually get IB from CDH. So we want to ask the same thing. Can we do the same thing? Can we use garbling and circumvent the impossibility result of Pagdaz and Rudish in order to build PKE from one-way function in a non-black box way? We're OK with that. And our main result is that 
Essentially, no, you can't do that. And we will do so, we will prove, we will rule out such construction in a model where uh, th 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 this model captures the known uh, gobbling based positive constructions. And this is the same model that's used by uh, the previous works of Berkersky, Katz, Segev, and Yurikimovic, and uh, Asherov and Segev under a different context. But I will explain that in more detail later on. So now that we have seen what the problem and motivation is, I will go now and explain what, how we can uh, model our problem so that we can be able to solve it and prove uh, our result. So when we talk about black box separations, we usually use black box separation techniques in order to separate uh, a primitive Q from, a, from another primitive P that uses it in a black box way. And using these separations would imply that such constructions do not exist. However, we cannot simply use black box separations in our case. Why? Because the constructions that we want to rule out are inherently not black box. The, b, b, so the, any, anytime we use garbling in order to uh, uh, build our PKE scheme, uh, we, we're going to use a one-way function in a non-black box way. So how can we, can we possibly cast this non-black box construction as a black box construction so that we can apply the known standard black box separation techniques and prove our results? That's the question that we'd like to ask. So in order to, to do that, we're going to look at first exactly, we're going to see what, how does garbling make constructions not black box? And so the way that garbling is usually used is that, if you recall, this is the garb subroutine. It takes us input a circuit, and outputs a garbled circuit plus some input labels. Right? And one could potentially feed this garbled circuit as, and use, feed this garbled subroutine a circuit with some one way, with the circuit of the one way, one way function code. And this makes any construction that uses the garbling subroutine become non black box in the use of the one way function. So, we're going to redefine our gobbling subroutine so that it allows, uh, to, so that it allows as input circuits with one-way function gates. We're going to reinterpret uh, this uh, gobbling subroutine. So now, instead of injecting the one-way, the one-way the circuit of the one-way function in our circuit, we can just plant one-way function gates in the oracle, in the, in the circuit. And so now we're back to being black box in the use of the one-way function. So given that, we can now reinterpret our construction, our non-black box construction, into a black box one by saying, if, uh, by saying that any PKE construction, if we could construct any PKE construction from this new primitive of one-way function plus gobbling, uh, uh, plus the gobbling subroutine that accepts circuit to the one-way function gates. And now we can state our main theorem more formally that there exists no black box construction of PKE from one-way function plus garbling that accepts one-way function gates. This is our uh, formal theorem. Great. So the big picture of our approach is that we turn this non-black box construction we remodel it as a black box uh, uh, construction of PKE from this new, model, from this, uh, uh, new uh, primitive. And our goal is to show, using, using the standard black box separation techniques, uh, that PKE constructions uh, do not exist from, uh, these, uh, from, from one way function plus garbling uh, from one way function gates. That's our goal right now. But before that, I would like to uh, go over uh, some of the previous separation results that use this method because it's quite related to ours as well. So this model, wasn't, this, this model that we're using wasn't the first time that's used. It was um, introduced back by, uh, by Bukersky et al. back when they were showing that there exists no uh, PKE construction from one-way function plus uh, NISIC, where the NISIC could accept statements that could have one-way function, uh, one function calls within them. So the difference between uh, their result and ours is that their result only rules it out, only rules out the perfectly complete PKE. 
whereas we extend the result to rule out even imperfectly complete PKE. We do not make the assumption that we, uh, that, that we rule out only perfectly complete PKE. Furthermore, there's the, uh, the other result, Ashar from Segev, where they show that uh, secret key functional encryption, if you allow the key generation uh, uh, subroutine of the uh, secret key functional encryption to uh, have one-way function or codates, this primitive does not imply uh, public key encryption. And they also use the model that we use uh, as well. But the difference here, uh, the difference in the result from ours is that um, they would uh, rule out non-projective but reusable garbling. By non-projective, we mean that uh, they need to encode input all at once. Whereas in our result, we actually rule out projective garbling. Where, where if you recall, projective means we, we are allowed to encode bit by bit. And um, this projective property is often used uh, in, in positive constructions uh, such as, say, uh, and it's often required, say, in Yao's uh, uh, secure function evaluation, or even in the recent result of, the, of uh, Dotlink and Garic, where they, where they required this project, projective property in order to build identity-based encryption scheme uh, from CDH. And it's important to understand what are the constructions that are captured in this model so that we can uh, identify how useful this model is. So these are the, the constructions that, uh, that use, uh, these are the constructions that you go, use gobbling to gobble circuits with only function gates, such as Beaver's OT extension protocol or the, uh, uh, the uh, RAM gobbling uh, schemes uh, due to uh, Lou Ostrovsky and Garg Lou Ostrovsky and Scafuro. However, if you say wanted to gobble a circuit that gobbles the gobbling subroutine in a recursive manner, then this, this, is, this, this is not captured by this model. But it, in fact, falls under something called the monolithic framework of Gag Mahmoud Muhammad, in, uh, which was done in last uh, crypto, which was presented in the last crypto. So now that I've described our separation model, I can now go into more detail behind the ideas of the proof uh, of how to use this model in order to prove our result. So basically, let's recall a standard method for proving black box separations first, so that we can use it in our work as well. So in order to prove that a black box separation of a primitive Q from, in order to prove a black box separation of Q from P, we need to define an oracle, just that this oracle securely realizes P, meaning that there is no adversary that breaks P, but any construction of Q relative to this oracle can be broken using an adversary that asks a polynomial time number of queries. So if I show an oracle that is P secure, but any adversary could break any Q under this model, then we basically saw a separation between P and Q. OK, so we want to use the same technique in our work. How would we do that? So the first attempt is to uh, show that OK, we want to define an oracle such that, uh, the, uh, such that it realizes this one-way function plus garbling that could have one-way function gates. So how would we do that? So the oracle O would consist of the following. First, let's just realize a one-way function. We can just use a random oracle, right? This gives us a, a secure one-way function. So how do we realize the garbling part of this, the second part of, the, uh, uh, of our oracle? So to realize this garbling, uh, the other part, we're going to define an ideal garbling scheme for circuits with F gates, or random oracle gates, which represent one-way function gates. And these are composed of two subroutines, which, uh, which um, map to the same subroutines that belong to the garbling uh, scheme, uh, garb and eval. Garb can be seen as a random function that maps seed circuit pairs to garbled circuits and input labels. So it's just a random function. And eval takes the garbled circuit and the input labels, uh, finds the corresponding circuits and the inputs belonging to, that, uh, to these input labels, and outputs the result C of x. Great. 
So we defined our Oracle. This is it, uh, which is uh, F and carbon eval. However, the problem is that this, this Oracle is too strong. It's actually strong enough to realize a strong form of obfuscation, which is called virtual black box obfuscation. And this, in fact, implies PKE. So this won't work. We need somehow to um, weaken this oracle so that it still gives us garbling, but it's not strong enough to give us PKE. So how would we do that? So the right version of this oracle is that we, we take, we take uh, this original oracle that we have, and we add a weakening subroutine. We'll call it a reveal subroutine, which takes as input the garble circuit and two different sequences of input labels belonging to two, uh, corresponding to two different inputs, and reveals the secret, key, uh, reveals the seed and the underlying circuit. Um, this basically, uh, this, uh, this intuitively uh, says some, uh, 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 realizes the security of a gobbling scheme, where it says that if you, gob, if you evaluate the circuit on two different inputs, all bits are off, reveal the circuit. That's what it means for the reveal function. So we're fine with that, because the garbling scheme is anyways a one-time use garbling scheme. So now our Oracle O is this new Oracle, which is composed of the random Oracle, garb, eval, and the reveal function, which is the weakening subroutine. Great. So our Oracle now, going back, uh, our goal is to show, this is our Oracle, this is our construction, and our goal is to show an attacker that uses this Oracle to break this PKE scheme in order to prove the black box separation. And we want to show that any PKE can be broken using only polynomial number queries to the Oracle. So specifically, what we will do is that this adversary will make exclusive use of the reveal function. We won't allow the PKE scheme to ask, to query the reveal Oracle. And this is still sufficient to proving a black box separation. This is similar to the techniques uh, used uh, by Gardner et al. and Shao Raisin, uh, which defined the two oracle uh, uh, separation uh, technique for separation results. Great, so our approach at a high level is as follows. We have this PKE scheme in the, or in, 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 in the oracle model that we defined. And what we're going to do is we're going to compile out the evaluation queries from this public uh, from this, uh, PKE. And what, by compiling out, this means that we simulate any evaluation queries uh, that the new PKE scheme will do. We will simulate it without asking the Oracle explicitly. So what we end up with is a PKE scheme uh, that is, we're going to make sure that is the PKE scheme is almost as correct and as secure as the original PKE scheme. And this new Oracle is going is simply just a random Oracle. If you recall, GARB is just a random Oracle. And the new PKE scheme doesn't ask any eval queries. And we know that by the result of Bagdad's and Rudich, that there is a poly query attack against this uh, new PKE scheme. So we can reduce this attack with the help of the reveal subroutine, which we defined specifically to weaken the Oracle. We will use this reveal subroutine in order to break the uh, original PKE scheme. And this basically, uh, this basically shows that the insecurity of the original PKE scheme. So our approach in more detail is that we're going to actually remove evaluation queries one by one in order to simplify our approach. So first, we're going to compile out the evaluation queries from the key generation. Then we're going to compile them out from the encryption. Then finally, we're com compiling the evaluation queries from the decryption. And in each phase, and at the end, we're going to get the, uh, get the PKE scheme in the random Oracle model. So we're going to use the attacker of the IR scheme, and we're going to reduce this attack back to uh, an attack to the previous scheme, and so on, to the, uh, again, back to the previous scheme, until we get an attacker in the, for the original scheme. So this is how we will do it in, in more detail. So let's look at first how do we compile out the evaluation queries from the key, gen from the key generation algorithm. So suppose we want to compile out the evaluation query from the uh, from the key generation oracle, uh, from the key generation algorithm. So we're going to use this key property 
of our, of our, de all, our, our defined GARP subroutine that the gobble, size of the gobble circuit is much larger than the uh, input circuit size. And this basically means that it's hard to find any gobble circuit without explicitly asking uh, GARP itself. So in this case, the keygen algorithm would know C1 and would, doesn't need to ask eval. It could just compute C, C1 of X on its own. So we're done in this case. That's an easy case. So suppose now we want to compile out the evaluation queries from the encryption algorithm. In that case, the evaluation, let's, let's look at this evaluation query where, in fact, encryption does not know C1 because it did not generate the, cor the corresponding uh, garbled circuit for the circuit. So our idea is to let the key generation algorithm help the encryption. And in order to do that, we're going to modify the key generation algorithm and make it into a new key generation algorithm that sends a hint to encryption to help the encryption algorithm asks um, uh, to, to help the encryption algorithm uh, simulate the evaluation query on its own. So what should the hint be? How about we, ju we, sh we, we just uh, include garb C1 plus the garb circuit? That's, a val that's, I mean, that's one way to do it. But the thing is, this breaks security because we can't release information that we can't get from the original scheme ourselves. So the actual solution is that we allow the, key gen, the new keygen key gen algorithm to run the encryption many times, uh, then add the answers of evaluation to queries to the hint list. These are basically the highly probable uh, evaluation queries that will be asked by the encryption algorithm. And this way, we, the encryption algorithm can use the hint list to uh, uh, simulate the evaluation answer on its own. And finally, we have this decryption algorithm we want to uh, remove the evaluation query from this, uh, from this, um, from the decryption algorithm. And the way that is done is that, well, decryption algorithm doesn't know C2. So again, let's the encryption algorithm help the decryption algorithm. So our first instinct is again, send a hint list to the decryption algorithm and let the encryption algorithm run decryption many times, just the same, with, same thing we did for the encryption and add the answers of the evaluation queries to the hit list. However, here's the problem is that the encryption doesn't know secret key. So while this at, initial, at, 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 at a first glance won't work, what we're going to do is something very similar, but instead of running the decryption algorithm on the real secret key, we're going to simulate a fake secret key. And this fake secret key uh, this, the, the, will, will yield a distribution of decryption that's very close to the decryption under the real secret key. And we're going to run this many times and add the answers of the eval queries to the hit list. And this concludes the compilation process. So to summarize, our main result says that one-way function plus garbling for circuits one-way function gates are insufficient for constructing PKE in a black box way. And there are other extensions of this work that I did not discuss in this work, uh, in this talk, uh, that is, we extended it to link out uh, even constant round key agreement protocols. And we also uh, extended the work of Bukersky et al. to show that one-way function plus NISIC with one-way function gates are, uh, are not sufficient for constructing PKE without even assuming perfect uh, completeness. And finally, uh, I'll leave you with some open problems, which is uh, extension to link out PKE even if we allow gobbling of the gobbling scheme itself. That's a very interesting uh, uh, problem, and it somehow falls under the monolithic model. And there's the extension to link out key exchange with polynomial number of rounds from one-way function plus garbling. So yeah, thank you.